Okay, looks like we're recording. Uh, welcome to the March GIST Forum. Phil Blackwood's going to uh, give us a rundown of some upcoming changes to units of measure and magnitudes coming to GIST. So with that, Phil, I will hand it over to you. Okay, thank you. Um, I'm gonna try to focus just on some of the key concepts um, and do it somewhat informally and please feel free to jump in with any comments, questions, suggestions. Um, would love to get everybody's feedback. <clears throat> so here are topics. First is what's the goal of um, doing these changes? Uh, we have a standard pattern for magnitudes that I'll show you. Um, we actually have a set of reference data that has uh, 1,700 uh, units of measure and uh, what they measure, what types of things they measure. Um, so I'll introduce that idea and then um, identify what some of the simplifications are and sort of sketch out uh, the data conversion process. All right, so we want to make it as simple as possible for enterprises to manage their quantitative data. Uh, if you can imagine an enterprise that's fully data centric, they're going to have hundreds or maybe thousands of types of things that they're measuring, uh, financial data, product data, process metrics, etc. So um, <clears throat> try to make sure that we've covered all those uh, scenarios. And uh, <clears throat> one one uh, key capability is to be able to identify what the correct unit of measure is to use for any uh, given situation. Some of them are very simple, like you know mass or area, but others are more complex. Like I ran across one called molar refractivity, and if you need to measure it, it's like okay, what what's what's the unit that you would should that you would use for that. Um, so the reference data helps address that. Um, you need to be able to convert values from one unit of measure to another. Um, that's easy to do with just today, but um, you know it'll continue to be just as easy. That works the same as it did before. Create new units of measure from existing ones. Um, like I did a little exercise to say, okay, let's let's say you have an electric car and uh, you want to know um, watt hours <clears throat> per mile. That wasn't in our reference data, so uh, it would be a, a unit that you'd want to create from existing units. Um, if you have watt hours as a unit and miles, you should be able to create watt hours per mile. And um, we can do that automatically now and have it um, defined in terms of base units of the um, international system of units. You just run the query and, you know, here's your definition of, of what what hours per mile is in terms of those standard units. Um, this one was from Dave and it sounds very simple. If you want to say miles per hour times hours equals miles, you need to do more than just a decomposition. You really sort of want to be able to say my miles you uh, define the miles per hour in terms of miles and hours uh, and then have a way to multiply it that cancels the terms out. So that's supplemental to relating things to the international uh, uh, system of units. Um, and then uh, finally, <clears throat> for financial metrics, a lot of them use addition and subtraction as well. So you want to be able to say profit equals revenue minus expenses. All right, so what is our standard pattern for magnitudes that we're recommending? We, we worked through this and identified at least six different ways uh, that you could say a patio has an area of 144 square feet. But the one that we're recommending going forward is that you say the patio has a magnitude, it's 144 square feet, it's 144 square feet of area. And uh, uh, just as a general rule, uh, a magnitude is, uh, it's, uh, 
in the past, we've always thought of it as, you know, it's a number, it's a, a unit of measure like square feet, but it, it always is measuring some characteristic. So um, the, uh, what, what's new is to say has aspect area and, and tie in the area that way. So slightly more formal way to say this is you have a magnitude <clears throat> has a precision uh, which is in just today already no change there. Uh, there will be a new property has aspect which we actually didn't have before. Um, and so uh, in the example the aspect or measurable characteristic was the area uh, measured in terms of square feet and the numeric value is 144. Then when you look a little more closely at this unit of measure square feet, um, <clears throat> in just today, there's something called a conversion factor, which would let you, um, it, it helps it convert from say square feet to square yards or you know any other unit of area. Um, and we'll see this uh, conversion factor again in a minute. All right, so one thing that's missing here though is how do you know that air, um, square foot uh, is a way to measure area? So we want to make that explicit and say, okay, which which units of measure apply to any given aspect? <clears throat> and that's on the next slide. Any, any questions about this though? Yeah, I, I I threw one in in the chat here. I'm just curious why we want has aspect as our property that's connecting us as opposed to just RDF type in the the way that it's been in the past. Ah, yes. Um, the way it's been in the past requires these aspects to be defined as classes. Um, and <clears throat> the way we're doing it now does not. So rather than changing your um, ontology to add subclasses of units of measure and magnitude, um, we we want to treat the uh, the units and the um, the aspects as individuals. Like area is just an individual as opposed to a class. Okay, so then do you view the advantage as this is sort of a semantic artsy thing, right? Like it allows you to trim down your upper ontology yes. class hierarchy, yes. fewer total classes? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yep. So okay. from a governance point of view, it's a little easier to just add something to a class as opposed to adding a class. Gotcha. <clears throat> okay, so that's the uh, the standard uh, representation for magnitude, uh, basically with the has aspect added on. And then how do we know that um, which units go with which aspects? Um, well, that's reference data. We have a collection of reference data. We're intending to make it available to everybody. Um, haven't done that yet, but um, the 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 main concept is to say that every aspect or measurable characteristic has a collection of units of measure that can be used to measure it so for example area you could measure using acres square centimeters square foot etc depending on the scale of what you're dealing with if you're dealing with property you might work with acres if you're dealing with something very small um you you know, you might have um, square millimeters. <clears throat> so um, area, concentration, angle, amount of data, those are all aspects, measurable characteristics. And then within each box, we're saying, here are the things you can use to measure it. Bill, Peter's so, got his hand up if you're... Good to take yeah. questions or okay. Mm. Hi. So um yes. things like billion and trillion have got different meanings in different places. And I wonder, is it better to have a exponential kind of um approach 
to uh, to these so as to ensure that there's no ambiguity. Hmm. Well, I hadn't heard that one before. Um. <clears throat> What Peter's no, saying in the U in the UK a billion is a million million and the US a billion is a thousand million. Won't that be handled yeah. by the conversion factor? Hey, Paul, that's just mm -hmm. that all for that. We'll see you said. Sorry about that. Um so uh, yeah, I mean it's it it's this kind of thing where you get differences. Um the other thing is like if you go to India, they use things like Draw, um, what have you, as base units, and it's like, what the heck's a crore, you know? How do you spell that? C R O R E. So they oh, operate okay. at they operate at thousand million, and uh, and hundred thousand, I think, or something like that. You know, it's it becomes really awkward if you're working with vernacular. Uh, uh -huh. Yes. Whereas yeah. if you're working with the exponents of scientific notation, notation, it's not. And in the amount of data, we've got exas and gigas and kilos and megas. And these are absolutely right. standard. Um, right. uh, whereas the other things are absolutely not standard. OK. All right. Yeah, I wasn't aware of that. Um, oh, Re Rebecca's got something. Go ahead. Yeah, just in response to Peter, I mean, that's really a linguistic issue. It's not an issue of this particular model. That sort of um, those sorts of differences can arise in all sorts of contexts. And um, in this particular context, I mean, you would look at the definition. Um, and right. Right. admittedly, this is Anglo-centric or American, you know, U.S. centric, but but unless we're going to go with random uh, IRI, or, you know, randomly generated IRIs, this is a problem you have. But the actual definition in this case would be in the conversion factor for billion and um, yeah. million. I think that's, right. Yeah, I think that's right. Um, I, I mean, being U.S. centric is kind of a fact of life for us. We've talked about localization, but um, didn't think we had enough of a use case at this point. Okay, so uh, um, there's one more a, filler. Do you want to keep yes. going? Yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, Yakov. Um, do we have time in there uh, as uh, yes. data? Because time is very ambiguous as well when you have weeks and years. Will you be speaking about this separately, or is it understood that uh, it works similarly? Well, sort of the same issue. It's like you, you do run into these things like, um, you know, what's a month? <laughs> it's like, it depends. Um, and, and the um, <clears throat> there are some, some things that can be defined unambiguously for time, um, like, you know, second, minute, hour. Um, so no, I wasn't planning to go into that actually. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, All right. So it. just sorry. Nope. I said that's it. Go ahead. Oh, okay. All right. So no, there's the concept. And if we look at area and get a little more formal with this, we could say that um, there's reference data, and the namespace we're using for that is just D, just data. And we're saying there's an aspect called area, and it has a group of units that can be used to measure it. And uh, the group is just a collection, and it has members, and the members are uh, units of measure. So this is basically saying any one of these units of measure on the right can be used to measure um, area. And <clears throat> There's another little interesting uh, aspect to this, which is that all of these can be defined in terms of meter squared. So, um, in the uh, the SI, the International System of Units, um, 
meter would would be the standard for distance and meter squared would be the standard for area and um, every every one of these units is going to be some multiple of meter squared in the case of square yard uh, this number would be called the conversion factor that relates <coughs> a non-SI unit to uh, an SI unit. Okay. And so, Phil, are, Phil, are you are you going to get to it later? It's not obvious from this, but some units can show up in more than one unit group. Are you going to get to uh, that? No, actually, I'm just laying out what are the basic concepts. Okay. Lots of little, you know, nuances yeah. here and there yeah. that I wasn't planning yeah. to try okay. to address. Yeah, uh, we can we can follow up if people are interested with lots yeah. of examples and you know demo and so forth. But this is just like ABCs kind of. All right. So oh, I, I do have one question though about the unit groups, which is related to what Dave said. I mean, in other contexts, you've talked about unit groups being convenience um, collections, let's say for physicists, these would be all the units a physicist might be interested in and so on. Ah, yes. It seems to me you may be overloading the concept of unit group then because there's some unit groups which define what a certain aspect can be measured by. And then there are these other unit groups that don't. Um, so how oh. would I know if I have aspect area has unit group this, how do I know whether that's defining a convenient set of measurements versus um, things that all measure the same uh, aspect? Well, I think the convenience part is, is more related to um, uh, what discipline uses what aspects and, and units. Right, but so, since you're using the same predicate in class has unit group and unit group, isn't there ambiguity there about what relation the, to the unit group we're talking no, the, about? Um, right now, uh, we have the aspects related to disciplines, and <clears throat> we, we haven't close the loop and said, well, here are the units that make sense for this discipline. But the unit group um, should be all of all of the units that can measure this aspect. Oh, OK. OK. So yeah, I, I, would, I think another, another way to put it might be that that these specialized disciplines are subsets of these unit groups of right. all the possible Yes. ways to measure area realtors only use this subset yeah i see okay got it thanks okay so um so if i do a query in the uh, reference data and say hey i want to measure area how do i measure area so the aspect is area um a bunch of different units uh and uh, each in in the reference data for each um, unit, there's an equation that relates it back to uh, the um, the base units of the international system of units plus a few added in like bit, US dollar, um, radian for angles and so forth. So you'll notice that all of these are some multiple of meter squared. And I've never heard of a barn, but that that's uh, pretty tiny. <laughs> all right, any questions there? All right, so the basic, you know, the basic concept is just that you have these groups of units that can measure aspects. And so we have, um, Aspect, which is a measurable characteristic, such as cost, cycle time, or defect rate. Um, and uh, the aspect um, has a unit group, which is a collection of units that can be can all be used to measure the same aspects. There can be some overlap. You can have units that are in multiple groups. You can have um, there some nuances there, but 
That's the basic idea. And then um, the uh, members of the unit group are units of measure. Uh, and a unit of measure is just a standard amount that you'd use to measure or specify things. Okay, so in the reference data, we have 1700 units of measure, 400 aspects, 200 unit groups. And if you followed <coughs> the composition uh, has unit group followed by has member, you'd see that that's like um, 10,000 pairs where this unit can be used to measure this aspect. Okay, as far as the ontology goes, um, Another thing that happens a lot is that you can have one aspect that's broader than another. So um, you could have area as just a, a general aspect with the unit group that we've seen, but you could have a specialization of it, like you could have um, maybe the wing area of an airplane or um, like a cross-sectional area of a cable or some kind of specialized um, version of area. So a lot of times uh, when you want to add a new unit of measure, there's already a standard one defined that you're just uh, identifying the specialization of, and you can say this new one uh, has this existing one as a broader aspect. <clears throat> we have these uh, categorized, categorized by discipline uh, to some extent. Um, the, the, the disciplines that we have now are actually um, from an older version of QUDT and probably not complete, but you know, it's a start. As you know, Dave mentioned, if you're a realtor, you're, you're not gonna measure uh, areas in square centimeters. <clears throat> okay, and the unit group has members that are units of measure. And uh, the example we saw of meter, uh, meter squared rather, um, we would say that the exponent of meter is two for everything in the unit group, meaning everything in the unit group um, can be written as some number times meter squared. And the purpose of the exponents really is to allow automated creation of new units of measure from existing ones. It also provides a precise definition of what a unit is in terms of uh, these standard units. So you get things like, you know, um, in mechanics, uh, kilogram meter squared per second squared. So you'd have uh, exponent of kilogram would be one, um per i think i have that right or kilogram meter squared per second squared sorry about that so uh, exponent of kilogram would be one exponent of meter would be two and per second squared would be an exponent of minus two for second okay so uh oh, what can we simplify <coughs> Well, um, the concepts that we've looked at support all of these goals. So um, what, what we see is that um, we don't really need to have lots, lots of um, subclasses of units of measure to do business. And it's simpler to add, um, individual units of measure as opposed to creating a class every time you have a different um, aspect. So um, this part of GIST collapses to just unit of measure, one class with no subclasses. And uh, magnitude um, collapses as well. Let's see, I think reference value I forgot to include. So reference value won't go away. But um, the things that represent aspects like a balance or a counter or duration um, will will be removed from GIST. OK, questions? Um, as far as math goes, um, there are two. I have, a, I have a question, Phil. Yeah. 
So one of the things that we've talked about, but just thought I'd bring it up here. When you, one of the things, there are a handful of restrictions in just such as a georegion is necessarily has an area. Right. If you take away area, what are you recommending for representing those kinds of restrictions? What's the guidance moving forward for that? Yeah, I think the, the original comment there was to, to include in just, just the ones that are needed to support those. So for geo region, for example, and I noticed in Protege, um, if you try to include just D something or other, um, it, it won't take that unless your, uh, uh, <clears throat> your aspect is actually in GIST. So I worked through that yesterday, and, and I think uh, we just duplicate some of the things from the reference data into GIST to support those. So in other words, you would add back, area would in fact be there if you wanted to represent that, that restriction yes. on your region. Okay, yes. thank you. Yes, yes. Well, or, wait, or, or, I mean, you might do it as, a, as an anonymous restriction and just say yeah. that a geo region is, is, you know, measured in a uh, restriction that has an aspect yeah. that's area. Wouldn't it? Yeah, I was going to say it would make more sense to do it as an aspect um, right. instance, yep. because otherwise you're kind of arbitrarily throwing in the classes you need to define the restrictions that happen to be in GIST. Mm, uh, yeah, I was the the we we I, we could do it either way, you know. Let, let's let's kind of table that for now. But yeah, okay. One, yeah. Either okay. either make a class or make an anonymous restriction. Um. All right. So, what I did, you can tell me which of those <laughs> I actually did is uh, I said, okay, we have individual aspects such as area, and mm -hmm. then geo region has a magnitude that has aspect area yeah that's an anonymous restriction okay yeah yep yeah all right so one uh one use case is uh in financial data um you you have lots of things defined in terms of um sums and differences so if you want to say profit is revenue minus expenses um as you um you you can define profit and say it has an add end of revenue and a subtra subtrahend of expenses, and um, you can have as many add ends as you want. You can have as many subtrahends as you want. You can say you know something equals x plus y plus z minus uh, a plus b or minus a minus b minus c and so forth. So. Um, then also, if you want to do this little calculation, miles per hour times hours equals miles. Um, you can use um, has multiplier and has divisor to define the miles per hour. And again, you can have as many multipliers as you want, as many divisors as you want. Um, and those replace properties that exist in just that can only be used pairwise. If you say has numerator and has denominator, then you end up chaining things that gets very difficult to do math with. But um, with these properties uh, for what are you adding? What are you subtracting? What are you multiplying? What are you dividing? You uh, you don't have those deeply nested um, formulas. So you put those on the unit, not on the unit, right? Uh, well, for for profit, that would be an aspect. Um, yeah, and you can use them with units. You could use them with aspects for the multiplier and the divisor. Mm. So it's a little easier to do some of this dimensional analysis without having to convert all the way back to the, the base units. Uh, if you're limited to the base units and you say miles per hour times hours, uh, really, you, you can you can see what the base unit is, and then you can see well it could be any one of these. Um, uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, it could be any one of these um, multiples of the base unit. So this is supplemental. And it's mm -hmm. only if you need to do this kind of math. 
All right, so um, <clears throat> let's just kind of recap for a second. So there's the reference data and there's the, the magnitude. And of course they snap together. So basically the reference data allows you to say, yes, area is uh, you know, something, if I want to measure area, I can use square feet to measure it. Okay, so data conversion involves saying, oh, you know what? Uh, these different um, things in GIST are going away, so what do you replace them with? Um, and <clears throat> one of the um, key early steps is to identify what are the current patterns for representing magnitudes. We'll have, we'll deliver a, a set of queries that should help a lot in identifying those. Um, it would be great if people uh, could contribute to the reference data, uh, whatever um, aspects and units of measure they're currently using to say, okay, let's you know contribute this to the the uh, to the world and say anybody should be able to use these and. Um, the the more commonality there is in uh, what people use, the easier the data is to integrate across different data sets. So pull from the reference data, whatever you know, whatever units and whatever aspects are currently being used. Just just pull them, pull the the quote new version of those out of the reference data to use going forward. Um, Add the has aspect to every existing magnitude, because um, that's the the change there. Um, <laughs> and then, um, if your data set has uh, uses has numerator, has denominator, has multiple canned, those are going away. So replace those with uh, the new properties, like um, well, has multiplier exists. Um, and has divisor would be the other one. And then remove triples that you don't need anymore. And finally, the, the tough part is probably modifying all the artifacts that refer to the data that's been converted. The data conversion itself is really not very complicated, um, but um, the, potentially what would be a significant amount of work is making sure you've identified all the queries, all the documents, all the forms, etc., that that need to be changed. Questions, comments? Peter's got his hand up. Yeah. Well, I really love this. Um, I'm wondering when we talk about things like areas and volumes, how would you recommend that we also include things like coordinates? Well, a coordinate such as latitude and longitude. Yeah, geo coordinates and that. Yeah, kind of we, thing. we have those already in GIST, and I don't mm -hmm. think those change. Right. Okay. And how would you kind of like link the two together to say that these geo coordinates have got this particular acreage or something like that? Mm -hmm. Just That's basically say that. That there's an area. Um, how would we do that? The um, class restriction, or no? I think he means how how do we do a function based on the curvature of the Earth to say, you know, because doing the math of, of, oh. <laughs> of latitude and longitude yeah. close to the yeah. North Pole gives you a different answer than close to the equator. Right, right, right. Um, <clears throat> well, whatever the existing math is, I, you know, I don't know what the math is exactly. Um, so would, would we just, for example, rely on geosparkle functions and things like yeah. that? I think that's yep. probably the safest. Yep, yep, yep. Mike Sullivan has his hand up. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to make a point that's it's minor, but <clears throat> it would be a geo area and a geo point that references an acreage. 
Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. Yeah. And and related to that, a lot of databases like Oracle, for example, has a geospatial calculation. So if you if you give it uh, a geo uh, a geo uh, a shape, it, it'll come back with it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Intersec- intersections, uh, you know, anything you want to do with it, including calculating areas and stuff like that. So, I mean, it, yeah, I, that's I kind of what I, would, I was I, thinking. Yeah, uh, I'd let, I'd the let tri- the data triple stores yeah. tend to have those now, don't they? A lot, a few of them do. Well, I have a question. Yep. Yeah. Two questions, actually. One is a simple one. Right in the beginning, you had a goal slide. Identify one of the and second bullet was identify a correct unit of measure to use. Yep. There isn't there is no one correct unit of measure to use. Is it was what you mean here? Make sure that whatever you choose is at least compatible and not incorrect. Yes. Okay. Yes. okay. Another question. Well, more subs- it uh, yeah. <coughs> a correct. <laughs> Right, that's good. Thank you. Not the correct. <laughs> exactly. Another one is comes back to something Dave highlighted a moment ago. If there could be more than one unit group for different disciplines, for example, astronomers versus microbiologists versus real estate agents for, say, distance. Um, now you would have then three unit groups for those. No, I wouldn't. Three. I wouldn't. <laughs> you would not. Uh, I. I. How would you do I that? I wouldn't define. <clears throat> I wouldn't define unit groups in terms of a discipline. I would. I would um, relate the aspects and the units to disciplines. So that comes back to Dave's question. Maybe it's something <laughs> I've never been clear about. So, so for any given dimension, say distance or area, there's only going to be exactly one unit group for that dimension. Um, that's usually the case, but not necessarily. So well, if you have if you have some kind of ratio, like miles per hour, um, or let's say miles per gallon, right? Uh, you you'd have a unit group that can measure that that has the the distance first as the numerator. Uh, it you could also, in addition to miles per gallon, somebody might come along and say, "Well, I'm I'm operating this um, big tractor thing that rolls the uh, uh, a rocket out to the launch pad, and and I talk in gallons per mile instead of miles per gallon." So that would go that would have to go into a different unit group, right? Even yep. though it measures the efficiency yep. of the vehicle. Yep. But that's the only exception that I know of. So um, I'm sorry, I, I should have raised my hand. But uh, so in Europe, of course, they use um, liters per hundred kilometers as their economy, and we use miles per gallon. So are those two different groups, or because they're both doing the same thing? Uh, it, yeah, it would just it wouldn't have to be a different group. It would not have to. Okay. No, wait, wait a minute. The, the liters, liters per per kilometer would have to be in a different group than miles per hour because they're not directly convertible. M- miles per gallon. Yeah. Mi- miles per be- gallon. Miles per gallon and and uh, liters per hundred kilometers are are directly compa- uh, uh, calculable, but um, <laughs> I, I, you know, when, I don't know where 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 we would put those. Uh, yeah. Liters per hundred kilometers, it would be comparable to um, gallons per mile, right? Right. So there'd be a group that would have the um, <coughs> like the volume per distance. I see. So then, then if I wanted miles per <coughs> gallon, I would have to convert the gallons per mile. So it's a double conversion. I have to yeah. convert. Yeah. Yeah. Be an inverse. Okay. Yep. Right. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Gotcha. All right. And yep. you know, there, there are also some units that are defined in terms of logarithmic scales and so forth. So um, doing the math with those is uh, sort of a different story.
Yeah, going back to your point about discovering the patterns you've used, it was it was fascinating when we just looked at our own system, how many different ways we'd sort of accidentally come to to define magnitudes. I mean, we, as Casey pointed out, some of them are classes, some of them we use a special property, some of them we use something that looked very much like aspect. Seems like we used one other pattern that I forgot. Oh, with some of them it was just implied because, gee, right. Right. What, what, what else would you possibly hang on a time card? And then, of course, it turns out we hung something else on a time card. So that, you know, um, yeah, so it's it's it really kind of sneaks up on you how many different ways you've probably already done this. And it's and it's helpful just to understand that even if you don't convert to one way of doing it, it's 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 helpful to know that you've done it many different ways. Right. <laughs> yep. Uh, Yakov, hand up, then Michael. Oh, hand down. Go ahead, Michael. Yeah. So in these unit groups, oh, there's always. I'm sorry. Oh. I was mute. I muted myself. Oh, go ahead. Um, in monetary units, like you have dollars and you have uh, euros and other units, are they in one unit group or uh, with a dynamic uh, conversion rate? Or do you have separate uh, unit groups for every uh, uh, monetary unit and separate logic about how to convert them? No, I, I think they would be uh, one unit group that w <clears throat> because they all uh, can be used to measure monetary value. Um, but we can't just say the conversion factor is, you know, X because it varies daily. So no conversion yeah. factor on on the monetary units. And then they would all they would also show up in some of the other unit groups like dollars per hour is is going to be in a separate unit group than just dollars. Right, right, right. Question. And, oh, sorry. Go ahead. Well, terminology um, is, is a little, um, what's the right word? Informal, I think, on a lot of the financial things. Like when you're talking about profit, it could be profit for a single transaction or it could be, you know, total profit over a span of time. And those are mm -hmm. actually different things. One yep. is um, a profit, you know, profit out of point in time versus um, it would be profit per duration, really. Mm -hmm. Yep. Question. Yes. So these unit go, go, go back to the unit group slide or the bundle, the grouping slide. There you go. So each one of whoops, yeah, each one of these corresponds to what physicists call a dimension. So area, concentration, angle, and there would be other things like speed and all sorts of things. So for area, the standard unit is square meter. Now it's not highlighted in any way. Um, so, and then, but all the conversions are done in terms of square meters. So in the right. representation, does it a very explicit that says these conversions are with respect to square meter? How does square meter, how do you find the standard units? What makes them, I mean, they are special in a sense, but how do you find them in the? Uh, it's just this list, amper, bit, candela, Kelvin, et cetera. So if I see a unit group that says area, what do I have? Right. What query would I write to find out what the standard unit is for area? Um, you could. Well, that's a good question. Let's see. You you <laughs> could look for you could look for um, units that have a conversion factor of one. And there can be multiple. Um, or if you're interested in a specific unit, like a hectare, you you can uh, see in the reference data what's what's the conversion from um, how does it relate to uh, the um, like the standard square meter. How, I, actually, I'm a bit confused so, here looking at hectare. A hectare is, oh, that's a hectare is a thousand square meters. Is that what that's saying? 10,000? 
yes. Okay, okay. So I guess the sh the short answer is you look in the unit group and you find the one that has a conversion of you find the unit in there that has a conversion of one and that's your standard unit. Uh, there could be multiple though. So, <laughs> what, would, what would be an example of multiple? Uh, let's see. Um, you could have like a ratio and then sometimes um, you'd have like say milligrams and milliliters as opposed to grams and liters or kilograms. Oh, that's what you could say milliliter per. Yeah, milliliter. yeah, 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 right, right. I don't so have, those are equivalent. I don't have it off the, the top of my head, but, but yeah, they're, you know, how do you, Break the tie. <laughs> so that so does can I conclude then that there is no query that you can write that can tell you what the standard unit is? Well, there it wouldn't it wouldn't be that is, hard to add a triple to each group and just say what it is if yeah, if there there's was a standardization. Yeah. There's a standardization here, and right. there's a query that takes this expression and turns it into like a more English kind of expression in a very standard way so that even uh, uh, they're, they're basically in order, uh, in alphabetical order. So um, yeah, there, there's a query that you can use to do that and say, um, To put it in this kind of form. Um, but maybe I like Dave's suggestion. It'd be easy enough to just say for each one of those units, just have a class called standard unit, and then that's then it's so, trivial. So how does that help an enterprise? I think Dave was suggesting a predicate, not a class, right? Just call yeah, it. You can, have a, you can have a predicate as well. Well, if you just call it a standard unit, you don't know which group it's a standard unit of. You need the predicate. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think I I I think Phil's question is interesting. Is do you ever need that really? I mean, right. People just deal with units, and as long as they can get converted, they may not care. So. Uh, it helps example, understand the units you're looking at. If someone else well, coded up some units, then you're looking at and say, what is the standard unit? The first question I ask is to try to understand it. So I guess it's optional. Um, every, the, the way you find that for any given unit is you just look at this uh, equation, which is um, included in the data set. Oh, it's so meter squared out. is right there. Spelled out. <laughs> so, oh, I see. Okay, that's 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 good. Thank I you. mean, for <laughs> human understanding, this is a nice way to see, you know, how these things are related. Um, right. And the number at the beginning of it just happens to be the conversion factor. Uh, the only thing it doesn't work for is temperatures, where of course you have a um, an offset thrown in as well. So this is a text string yep. created by concatting things together. Okay. Yep. Hmm. That's not machine readable then. I mean, um, no. Again, yeah. let me let me just go back to saying you know it, what it was derived from some it was derived from something that's machine readable. This was this is the human but readable. What version. is the machine but, readable thing indicating the? Standard unit for the group. Uh, as I said, here's here's what you keep, and there's a query that can take that representation and, in a standard way, turn it into something like this, where you'll have uh, things that are. Uh, in the numerator and per means you're dividing by these things. 
uh, they're in alphabetical order in the numerator, they're in alphabetical order in the de denominator. So um, it's all there. I mean, I, I just keep coming back to the question, if you're an enterprise, how are you going to decide whether you want to measure something in kilograms or grams? It doesn't depend. It doesn't depend on which one is standard. It really depends on which one is closer to the scale that you care about. That's true. OK, any other? Questions? Of course, you can send us email and say, hey, what about this? What about that? There are an awful lot of <coughs> what abouts. <laughs> yeah. uh, Jakob, hand up. Right. I read on the last slide uh, exponent of other. Uh, is, uh, yes. What is that? Um, that's uh, just a, a way to say that, you know, this is pH. You cannot express it in terms of all these others. Um, or if there's yeah, some dimension that's missing here, um, you know, it um, basically is saying that <clears throat> you cannot express uh, this unit in terms of exponents of these, these um, standard things in in this kind of way. So log things that are on a logarithmic scale, you know, like decibels or or pH. Um, and if we didn't have steradian, for example, uh, then anything that had steradian in it would would have an exponent of other of one. Um, I didn't want to have to do this, but you know, um, there had to be some way to say this one's different uh, and it's actually equivalent to QUDT, which has, um, let's see, exponent of, um, they call it dimensionless, which seemed a little more mysterious. Hmm. Uh, does, it mean, does it mean that if you have that so if you if you have only numbers which are without other, everything the mathematics works. If you have other in there, it just a sign like an exception. Correct. Things break yeah. and your ontology is uh, uh, it's not working anymore. So the yep. uh, you know you can't use the usual conversion rule, for example. <clears throat> Question, request yes. actually, a question and a request. Uh, I would like to see, just so I can see exactly in, the, in acute detail what the new representation is in, in actual triples. It'd be nice to, to not throw away what we have already and just in other words, all the magnitudes we have and all the units, base units, represent those as a separate thing so that what we get is a new representation, but it also doesn't throw any of the existing units away. That would serve two purposes. One, it, people would wouldn't have to recreate things from scratch, and two, it's easy to see exactly how things work. When you say don't don't remove the uh, existing units like second minute and so forth, is that yes, exactly. So now that whatever units are in just at the moment, leave them. Leave leave out the subclasses of magnitude and unit to measure as you suggested yeah, the units they themselves they they don't follow the naming standard though pardon they don't follow the naming standard they don't follow the what standard i'm not hearing naming naming the name With space the, the name yeah, spacing the infix mm -hmm. oh well the, well you can change it all around just redo it in the new ways that's what i'm suggesting so we can all see exactly how it works and also we can just use the ones that we've been using all along. I'm um, not sure I'm following, but just just as an example, um, just I think has um, just second. 
Yeah, let's just take that uh, one. It's simple. In the reference data, it would be unit of measure second. Yeah, that's so, fine. Yeah, the recommendation is to um, pull in whatever you need from the reference data. And if you're using second, then replace it. You know, every triplet yeah. has second in it with. I guess what I'm saying is if I want to do this and recreate the 17 or so units and just I have to go through 1700, I'm just suggesting do that work for us so we have a starting point. Uh, are, you, are you talking about in, in just itself, there's a small handful mm -hmm. and in, but yeah. in any client engagement, you know, it's a bigger handful, but it's not. Nobody has 1700. Nobody even no, has. No, exactly. What well, I'm just saying, I they would have a like, few dozen. That's what I, that's right. We have about 10. I haven't counted them. But yeah. I'm, all I'm saying is it'd be nice to have a separate module, which is a subset of all the reference data for the ones that are currently in GIST. That's all. Rebecca. Um, two questions. It, can you go back to the one with the discipline on it? Yes. Uh, I think I can. <laughs> Here we go. Yes. So I just want to make sure I understand what you said correctly. So a discipline could also categorize a unit of measure. Is yes. That right? yeah. Yes. Okay. Got that. Yeah. So yeah. the the other question I have is um, th this isn't such a big deal, but related to goes broader. At this point in time, we don't use any SCOS or in fact any third party. Um, ontologies other than annotation properties. So has there been some consideration as to whether to mint um, a corresponding GIST uh, predicate rather than using SCOS? Because that would sort of be a departure from our current practice. Um, we could. Yeah, okay. You recommend that? Well, that would be my, but you know, it's not my decision, but that's Can you repeat I, that? Can you repeat that, Rebecca? I didn't catch the details. Well, we don't use SCOS or any external ontology except for annotations. So this would be. Oh, I see. This would okay. be a change. Uh, so I mean, it might be preferable to have a just predicate there instead. So it's not a major point. But it does need to be decided. I mean, Dave, do you have any <clears throat> thoughts on that? Yeah, um, needs to be decided. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have a, I don't have a strong feeling. I mean, you're right. In, importing a, a whole nother uh, yeah. ontology just for one predicate seems no. kind of excessive. Yep, yeah. yep. So we hang on. We already use SCOS for. Annotations. For annotations. That was my point. This isn't an annotation. So we don't have to import oh, those to use the annotations. Oh, I see what you're saying. Because it's an object property. Yes. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. We are right at time here so i guess we can wrap yeah. unless there's thank anything you, else worth covering okay We're good thank you cool. again, thanks Phil. thank you thanks good a lot. Rundown. This is appreciate it. Send us yeah. an email if you have any other comments